How's it going? So, here we are. CO2 laser video. Finally, he got to it. Now, don't click away yet. This video is not about the tube. This video is about a problem with the tube that I don't know if anybody has tackled this problem. So I've been testing this thing day in and day out, trying to get an output that I'm finally happy with. And you know what I'm really sick of? I am so sick of this. So what we're gonna be doing today, we're gonna be making an Arduino controlled setup to mix the gases for me into whatever ratio I like. Now I think that'll save me a whole lot of time and also a whole lot of guesswork in measuring balloons. <laughs> now while we're here, let's give you a little teaser on the laser. current tube I've been testing is much longer than the one that you saw in the last video as you can probably see. It's got a much bigger bore and I've been trying different output couplers and different mirrors. I have, where is it? I've found a convex mirror which seems to help quite a bit. I was able to track down a germanium output coupler. So I have this tube, I also have this tube. There's also four more but we're not gonna talk about those. But these two I have been getting much closer to the output that I want. Once I get an output that I'm happy with and I have a tube built that I think will stand the test of time, if you will, that's when I'll post my next video actually on the laser tube itself. So be patient, I'm not gonna give up. I'm a pretty stubborn dude. At the detriment of my bank account, it is coming. Anyway, so the idea here is we're gonna have a container with this air shim inside. Now, I'm gonna need a bigger container. And coming out of the container, we'll have a column sticking out the top and two solenoid valves hooked up to the air shim. The container will be filled with a liquid. One solenoid valve will open, fill up the air shim, and it'll force the liquid up the tube. Using a series of laser diodes and photoresistors, we'll be able to measure how much volume is inside the air shim by how much water gets displaced up this tube. Then this solenoid valve will open, which will lead to a compressor, and we can compress that gas into the tank, and then we'll know exactly how much volume of each gas we're adding, and we can let the Arduino do all the mathy stuff. Ta-da! Now then, we're gonna take this container and epoxy a fitting in place to where this can be sitting on the inside, completely sealed, and we can hook our air up to it. Or, what? Gas, not air. Air is a gas. All right, we got our two pieces that need to be epoxied. Let's go ahead and do that so we can get all the, the waiting done. You know, I always hated JB Weld, mostly because it takes so long to cure, but after seeing the successes it's given me with holding a vacuum on the laser tube, uh, I've really kind of grown fond of it. I'm really starting to learn patience for it. Is this what growing up feels like? Now we just gotta let those sit overnight. On the order of getting everything done that we need to wait for, we need to figure out our compressor situation for this. Either we're gonna use a fridge compressor if it'll put out enough pressure to be useful, or I have a Harbor Freight air compressor and we'll just epoxy the whole thing shut and give it one inlet hose. And hopefully that'll work. All right, so I have the outlet of the fridge compressor hooked up to this gauge. Let's give her. That's a lot of pissy. You know what? I think that this is gonna work just fine. That's great news. We just gotta make sure to do our math right on the Arduino so we don't blow up the tank we're trying to fill. That, that was peaking at 210 PSI with a leak. So that means we don't have to fiddle around with trying to epoxy shut a compressor, <laughs> which honestly was a stupid idea to begin with. So the plumbing parts go together like so. So now using all these parts, we can kind of see how much space this thing's gonna need within the case. So I'm thinking the case for this is a minimal part of this build. The majority of this build is gonna be running wires and running tubes all over the place. So I need full access to everything inside the case. 
So I'm gonna build this much like a welder case so I can lift the whole top off and access everything inside. And when I say welder, I don't mean fancy schmancy Miller machine with all the greebling on the outside. I'm thinking Harbor Freight. Well, let's get to it. So, uh, it doesn't quite fit. Looks like we're gonna have to go for the, uh, worked in look. Well, that was a nightmare of hammer swinging and clamps and self tappers. But you know what? We got it, man. Got a nice little bevel on here. Our face plate installs in there. I think it looks pretty cool. Now I think all we need for this is a handle. So while we wait for that epoxy to set up, we can start figuring out what we want this thing to look like on the inside. It's what's inside that matters. I think I need to stare at this for half an hour before I figure out how this is gonna work. I think I want this guy pushed as far this way as possible in order to dodge the handle. We need enough space for this guy. That means this guy can go right here. Stuck some bolts in the holes that are already existing on there. Then I'm just going to position it exactly where I want it, tack them in place, pull it off, and weld them up. Now that that's more or less sorted, we got to figure out how all the electronics are going to mount. So that's why we cut out this third piece. This will fit in there, keeping all the electronics completely separate. We need a 12 volt power supply, 5 volt power supply. This is where the Arduino will mount. We need a relay board, probably a decent chunk of prototype board. And would you look at that? Easy. You know, and maybe a fan would be smart. Let's see what I got. We found a fan. It's 14 volts, but 12 volts just means it'll run a little slower, right? It's fine. All right, so we got our electronics board built, already installed the two power supplies, got all my standoffs on there, and this is where all the wires and gas hoses are gonna pass through. Moment of truth, let's fill this thing up. It's all filled up, and as you inflate the air shim. All right, to install this thing, we're just gonna epoxy it in place. This is a very epoxy heavy video. So this is epoxied in place. I've got some epoxy putty holding the corners in. Obviously none of that's dry, but we're gonna go for it anyways. F well, that sucked. But you know, on the bright side, we had so much fun doing it, now we get to do it again. All right, this little spaghetti mess. That's the final resting spot. I'm gonna apply this epoxy and I'll be back. So the few things we can do while we're waiting for this epoxy to set up. One, we need some vent holes for this fan in the case. And two, we can cut everything into the front panel that we need for switches and display and all that funky stuff. So, to the plasma cutter! Hey man, if it's dumb but it works, then it ain't that dumb. So we've done enough futzing around that the epoxy is dried now and I've already refilled the container with some red Kool-Aid. It's just water dyed red, but we'll pretend it's Kool-Aid for the delicious factor. Oh yeah! We have these 3D printed parts, which came out great. And one side will take a laser diode. The other side will take a photoresistor. This slides onto here. We can stick a set screw in there and hold it at a certain position. And once the water level comes and blocks the light from the laser dial going to the photoresistor, I'll be able to measure that on the Arduino, and that's how we'll know the position of the water. 
Now, red water might not block this red laser diode very well, but if it doesn't seem to be working well, we'll just throw some other dye in there and make a nice poopy brown color. So it seems we're at that point of the video where I install the electronics off camera and paint it off camera and make a bad animation to try and explain this monstrosity. So, here we go. Let's talk electronics. So the whole thing's gonna be... This thing is killing me. So I've been trying to mess with the software and the hardware trying to get this thing to work and I've spent just about all day on it. I rewrote the whole program piece by piece trying to pick out exactly where I'm going wrong. And I think the main culprit is this guy. I thought it was a pretty unique way to measure the volume in there by measuring the water displacement, but it has a slew of issues, mainly being the photoresistors. Now, I did get it to where I would get a fairly consistent reading across them, but the problem is when the relay board switches, that takes quite a bit of current, and it would cause funky disruptions in here, which would be causing these to spit out different values, and just the whole program would go haywire. Now using an opto isolated relay board may fix this, but it is a maybe. So while this was kind of a cool idea, I forgot the number one rule of making anything. Keep it simple, stupid. So my new solution for this, I'm still gonna use an air sham. I feel like it's the most durable sack I can fill. <laughs> Instead, I'm gonna have it mounted within a frame and as it expands, it will hit a limit switch. And that won't give me quite as much resolution as this setup will, but it's a whole lot simpler. So there's a whole lot less that can go wrong. Sorry I made you watch me build this just to throw it away, but just taking you along for the ride, man. Here's our new setup. So the air shim is rigidly affixed in this frame and there's a limit switch just dangling in front of it. Once it's fully expanded, it hits the limit switch. All right, where were we? The whole thing's gonna be controlled by an Arduino Uno with a relay module, a push button, and our limit switch on our air shim thingy. There will also be an LCD screen and an indicator light, but that's all fluff. We're not talking about fluff here. The relays will control the in solenoid valve, the out solenoid valve, and the pump. So the system will only be doing one gas at a time. In between each gas, it will wait for an input from the button. When the button is pressed, it will turn the pump on and that will run continuously. The in valve will open and start expanding the air shim. Once it hits the limit switch, the in valve will close, the out valve will open, and there will be a one and a half second delay to allow all the gas to be compressed into the tank. On each cycle of this, the Arduino will be doing math and adding the volume of the air shim to a running value. Once the running value matches our target value for that volume of gas, it'll set everything back to zero and wait for an input for the button. Then rinse and repeat, do that for all three gases, and we got our mix. All right, this is gonna be our first run on the machine. I put this little tank together with a regulator and a gauge to tell how much pressure is in here. The first thing we're gonna do is suck as much air out of here as we can with Suck Boy here. Hopefully we don't mess up the gauges. There it goes. All right, I think we've gotten the majority of the air out of there. Pull that out. For our first run on this machine, I'm gonna leave the case off. Just in case I did my math wrong on the volume to get this to 50 PSI, and we end up over pressurizing it. I do not want to blow up a tank today. Save that for a future video. I realize there's gonna be a little bit of extra air in the lines that gets into the tank, but it'll be a very minimal amount. Uh, I think I can live with that tolerance. Flick the switch. Uh, that indicator light really leaves a lot to be desired. Got our cute little startup message. Then it says attach helium, then push button. The LCD screen doesn't really seem to come up very good on the camera, but sorry. Now we can hook our helium up to the other side. Oh boy. 
All right, I think we can turn the flow rate up a little bit. All right, now we can attach our CO2. All right, we got our CO2 attached. I'm gonna turn this way down once again. Let's give her, we can give it a little bit more. And away she goes. <laughs> Nitrogen time and the nitrogen. It works! Nice! Seems in the end we hit about 45 psi, so my math wasn't that bad. Now all that's left is to put the case on. I apologize in advance for that bad edit. Ah. Check it out, man. Looks kinda nice. I'm pretty happy with this build. This was one heck of a project for me. I really kinda pushed my knowledge of Arduinos over the edge a little bit there, but this is a good thing. This is how we all learn. With all my research on DIY laser tubes, I don't know if DIY gas mixing has really been covered yet, at least nowhere that I've looked. So hopefully this can help people out. I'm gonna post all the code for it on GitHub as open source. Fair warning, I am by no means a good programmer. And I, it's unfortunate I spent so much time on the water displacement thing and to have it not work out, but that's the way these things go sometimes. And the air shim itself is so small compared to the containers I'm trying to fill that the resolution is just fine. Like the water displacement thing was total overkill. <laughs> anyway, it's way past my bedtime. About time I wrap this video up. Thanks for sticking around. If you made it this far, leave a good old dinger. Remember to subscribe and thanks so much for watching.